Well, if you believe things are going to get better, give God a big shout in this house this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. It's so good to have you here at Path Point Fellowship Church. Uh, several weeks ago, you may have been here when the Holy Spirit began to prophetically speak through me, and he said, he said, across the nations all around the world, every one of them are in spiritual drought, and it's caused a famine, and it's caused great thirst. So wherever there are my spiritual people, my spiritual church, he said, I've deployed wells. And those wells are spiritual, have spiritual water springing up out of them. And this is not only to sustain my people, but it's to nurture my people, to nourish my people, to cause them to continue to develop and to grow and to come to maturity. So at a place of maturity, they could become fruitful. A tree does not produce fruit until it's mature. Amen. And so he said to me, tell those who have been in your church, your spiritual church for years, or if you've just been here a few weeks, that uh, the winds of coincidence and chance did not blow you in to this house. But the hand of God directed you here because you belong. You are a part of God's chosen spiritual people. He did this intentionally. So don't let anything shake you out. Don't let your schedule shake you out. Don't let other people and what they're saying shake you out. Don't let the level of understanding that you're at. And so when things are taught here and you don't understand, the Bible says in the 13th chapter of Matthew, as well as the fourth chapter of Mark, the devil comes immediately still the word in the person that doesn't understand what's being said. Now, we'll talk about this next week because understanding is a great part of the kingdom of light. Understanding is light. It's one thing to know. Faith is, faith is, where, is where the will of God is known. We were taught that 30 years ago. But it's a whole nother level of faith when you understand it. Amen. We're going to talk about that next week. You don't want to miss the conclusion of it's going to get better. So uh, this is why, for those of you who are new to our church, uh, we want to offer to you a membership luncheon next Sunday, immediately after church. We'll provide lunch for not only you but for your children. And all I'd ask you to do is go to your insert, and on there is a QR code. And you can just scan that QR code, or you can go to Connect Card and fill that out and say you want to be a part and tell us how many people. Or you can let us know on your offering envelope of how many people, and that way we can have uh, food available to you as well. This will be uh, something that Missy and I will be sharing our history as well as vision casting. And all of our pastors will be there, so you'll get to meet them. And our leadership will be there. And so we'll talk about everything from ministries to babies, uh, MDO, uh, SOCI, uh, all the way through uh, the, all the things that a family does together. Amen. So you want to be a part of that next week, immediately after the service. And so there's your information right there. We'd love for you to be a part of it. Now, as we continue our series, it's going to get better. Uh, today's session is called Set Your Boundary. Tell your neighbor, set your boundary. Interesting. In a world of unbelievers, God is only God and can only ever be God. But to the world of those who call themselves sons and daughters of light, God is not just God, he's also Father. We just read it. He is the father of lights, with whom is no variableness. Variables, variableness means a mixture of light and darkness. There's no variableness in him, neither shadow of turning. Amen. So this is, he is to you and I, father. You understand the difference between a relationship with a God, and a relationship with a father. See, I'm a father, and many of you are too. 
but I'm a father to three sons. I'm not a father to your kids. And so I treat my kids, my sons, differently because I'm their father. I'm their provider. Huh? I'm their protector. See, that's what a father is. God is not that. Isn't it interesting that Jesus said this? He said, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh to the Father. He didn't say no man cometh to God. Every person can come to God. But only sons and daughters of light can come to Father. Have you made him your Father? As a son and daughter of light, have you made him your father? Do you see the kind of relationship that you have with him when he's your father as opposed to when he's just God? See? Now, what's required of all people that, are in re- that, that want a relationship with him is faith. Faith is required. It's the one thing that I bring into my relationship with him, and he as a father and me as a son, and maybe you as a son or a daughter, you bring your faith into that transactional relationship. Amen? And there's exchanges that a father has with their sons and daughters that God does not have with people, nor is he obligated to. Because first of all, they must believe that he exists. And if they don't believe he exists, there is no exchange. There is no obligation to protect. There's no no obligation to provide. Because, see, he's just God, not Father. Now, he's there. He's ready. He's willing. He's open for us to make that, that transfer over from him just being God to him being Father. But he won't force anybody to do it. Amen. What requires what's required of that? My faith. My faith. Now, in the kingdom of light, as we've talked about, we established this uh, a few weeks ago in this series. We see the many treasures, some of the treasures that are in the kingdom of light. But this is not an exhaustive list. This is just a few things. But these things that are in the kingdom of light are not available to those people who only know him as God. They're only available to those people who know him as Father. Are you listening? Now, again, it's not an exhaustive list because we don't have righteousness in here. We don't have peace in here. We don't have joy. This is just to kind of prime the pump to get you going, to get you moving forward so you build your own kingdom of light chart. But you should become so acquainted with what's in the kingdom of light. Quit looking at what's in the kingdom of darkness. Remember what Paul said. When you became a new creature in Christ Jesus, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. This is what's new in the kingdom of light. These are the things that are new. Huh? And these do not exist in the kingdom of darkness. The Bible says, says in the last days they'll cry, peace, peace, but there'll be no peace. Because they don't have peace to give away. You know why? Because peace does not, does, is, does not exist in the kingdom of darkness. Peace only exists in the kingdom of light. When you were saved, when you became born again, he transferred you out of the darkness, kingdom of darkness, into the kingdom of light. And we're supposed to get so focused on what's in the kingdom of light, these treasures. Remember, we've talked about it. We talked about how those are in, who are in darkness, they look into the kingdom of light, but they're blinded by the light. But since you and I are in the kingdom of light, we're not blinded by the light. And so there are things that have been, there are things that are just out there in plain sight. And you have to train your eye to see how, what kind of treasure that is and just how precious it is and get acquainted with that treasure. Get acquainted with it. Amen? So, he's transferred us out of darkness, and he's transferred us into the kingdom of light. Now, it's up to you and I 
set your boundary. Set your boundary. Say, set your boundary. The kingdom of light is one, and the kingdom of darkness is something completely different. Amen? Set your boundary. That word boundary means a line that marks a limit, the limits of an area. A line that marks the limits of an area. It means that between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness, there is a dividing line. So because you are a son and daughter of the Father of lights, then you are in the kingdom of light and the forces of darkness do not have the right to reach over out of darkness into the light. Oh, if you build your faith in this, you'll become untouchable. I said you'll become untouchable, and you won't live with fear and doubt and worry and concern and anxiety. Amen? But you have to build your faith in it. Build your faith not just that he's God, but build your faith that he is Father. Father. Amen? In my life, I'm living in the kingdom of light, and the forces of darkness have no right to touch me. Build your faith in that. Okay? Now, we'll talk about, we'll, we'll get more detailed about this. Say it one more time. Set your boundary. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at something Paul said. Don't continue to team up with unbelievers in mismatched alliances. Okay, now that you're in the kingdom of light, quit teaming up and having alliances with those who are in the kingdom of darkness. Quit teaming up with forces that are in the darkness, like the force of fear. Quit teaming up with fear. Quit teaming up with worry. It's a mismatched alliance. Quit teaming up with your past sins. Quit teaming up with that and pulling those past sins up out of there, digging it up out, and put and reminding yourself of what a dog you are. Or worse than a dog, a cat. I knew I'd get out of amen out of a dog person for sure. Now, look at what he said. For what partnership is there between righteousness and rebellion? Why would I want to have a relationship with a rebel? Someone who just won't do what God tells them to do. Amen? See, here's what happens. You go, well, let's finish it. Uh, who, could, who could mingle light with darkness? I'm in the kingdom of light. I'm a son of light. Why would I mingle darkness with my light? The darkness of bitterness, the darkness of anger, the darkness of strife, the darkness of offense, the darkness of greed. Hmm? Why would I mingle that? <laughs> I'm gonna show you why this is I'm gonna show you why this is so important. What we're saying is so important. If you peer too long into darkness, you'll make the same mistake that the first man and woman made. And the deceiver will say to you, God's okay with that. No, he's not. Didn't their actions prove that he wasn't okay? Well, see, God knows the day you eat thereof, you'll be just like God. You'll be just as wise as he is. No. We see what happened. Amen. But you get, to, you get to listening to the voices of darkness very long. You get to peering into the kingdom of darkness. You go to mingling. How do I know? I've done it. I've done it. I've done it. Amen. But see, I don't want anything that the forces of darkness have to offer. Like, see, I don't want death. I don't want to give the enemy a right to steal, kill, and destroy me or my wife or my children. 
So I, I don't want anything they have, so why would I mingle uh, something that's theirs? So let's look at a few uh, examples of this. I, I immediately, I, I've been studying the book of Daniel, it's only 12 chapters, and uh, he's a great prophet. The thing that was said about Daniel, you'll probably hear me talk about this in an upcoming series. We're going to be doing a series after Vision Sunday. Uh, Vision Sunday is not this next Sunday, but the next. Don't miss Vision Sunday, please. Okay. Now, let me, let me say this. Uh, next week, you're going to see we're going to be putting uh, stadium seating back here where y'all are on the back row. So your stadium seating will look just like this on the sides, except it'll be back here. We'll be changing and reducing our audio booth here. Much of that will be moved to a side room. And so this is going to allow us to put 150 chairs back here. Amen. And so we'll continue to add to that. And so you'll see, you're going to see other upgrades. Like we've got 42 new LED boards coming in that we'll add to this in three different sections on each side. God is good. I'm excited about this. I'm a creative genius. It's just nobody knows it. I create images on the inside of me all the time. Anyway, I'm excited to bring this experience to you because I, I told the Lord, many of you know I've been in the church for over 50 years. I told the Lord, I don't want to bring these people a service. I want to bring them an experience. First of all, with you. Well, amen. God is creative. Look at nature. Amen. So I was studying Daniel. The things that are said about Daniel is that he was a man of great wisdom, but he also had a spirit of excellence upon him. Have you ever been around someone with a spirit of excellence? They stand out, head and shoulders above everybody else. It's amazing what the spirit of excellence looks like. And uh, it says that Daniel was in a government position on the king's cabinet, so he had the ear of the king. And Daniel was had a close relationship with God. His routine is that he'd get up in the morning and he would pray. At noon he would pray. And at, uh, in the evening he would pray. And he didn't go to his prayer closet to do it. He went to the front porch. He bowed his, he bowed his knee and he prayed out loud. And there happened to be two senators in, the, in this king's government that knew Daniel's routine. So they went, to the, they went to the king and had him, and they wrote a law, and they asked him to sign this bill into law. I call it the Daniel Law because it was a law that targeted Daniel. And because the king couldn't get anywhere around it, he had no recourse other than to throw Daniel in the lion's den, which is the way, back then, that was the way in which they put criminals to death. Well, the kings told Daniel before he threw him in there, I know your God's going to protect you. Early the next morning, sure enough, king's first one there, Daniel, you down there? Yeah, I'm here, king. During the, the, that time that Daniel was down there, the Lord opened his eyes and he saw an angel standing at each lion holding their mouths shut. Great man of God. Amen. Well, the king looked at that bill and said, oh, I see what you deceivers tried to do. So it backfired on those two senators, and they threw them in the lion's den. Took Daniel out of there, threw them in the lion's den, and they died a gruesome death. See, what they wanted for Daniel came upon them. Daniel set his boundary. I want to show you something. He couldn't do anything about deceivers trying to change the laws of the land. But when they went to kill him legally, he had set his boundary, and they couldn't kill him. 
And here's what I want you to see. When you set your boundary, here's what happens. God may allow you, he may allow that storm in your life. He won't keep you from it, but he'll keep you through it. He'll keep you through that storm. Just like he did Daniel. Set your boundary. That's the key to it. This, this is not, this word faith is not an abstract word. It is a force to, 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 that's to be reckoned with. Reckoned with first on the inside of you. Well, where am I directing my faith? I'm directing my faith towards the kingdom of light. Amen. If I'm going, if, if a storm, if a storm just has to have, happens to happen in my life, that's not good English, uh, God will see me through that storm. He may not prevent that storm from happening, but he will see me through that storm. Some of you have gone through storm after storm after storm after storm after storm, but you know, God has seen you through it. You, you're hanging on. Well, don't get weary. Keep your faith. In the Father. Keep your faith in the Father. Don't give up. Amen. I'm thinking we could go to Elijah. We could go to Elijah. Remember Elijah? His, his greatest nemesis was Jezebel. We could go to Elijah who did had a double portion, did twice the many miracles that Elijah did. It's recorded in Scripture. Go count them. He did twice as many miracles, which is what he asked. I want a double portion. Think of David. David killed his first bear and his first lion when he was 13 years old. By the time he was 16, he killed his first giant. Now, between 16 and 30, there were songs written about David and his battlefield savvy. He killed his tens of thousands. Now, I want you to think about, it. We, you know, we kind of flippantly read through that, but think about it. Every single battle that David fought, it could have just as easily been David who got killed instead of his enemy. God didn't keep David from the storm. He kept David through the storm. Because David, even though he was redemptive gift mercy, and this seems like something opposite of what you would call a redemptive gift mercy to do, God assigned him to be a warrior. Amen. Now, let's tell your neighbor, set your boundary. Now, think of Jesus. We, we referred to this a couple of weeks ago. Jesus was at the end of his earthly ministry, and he makes this statement. He says, speaking to his disciples, Hereafter I will not talk much with you. There's a reason for that. Read that with me. Hereafter I will not talk much with you. Some of you husbands, you're ready for that statement. I will not. Jesus is in a really tight, narrow gate moment. In his ministry, he didn't want to say anything out of turn because he's under great pressure. He says, I'm going to minimize what I'm going to say to you. And you need to understand, I told you first, because I'm going to go under such, a, uh, such duress physically and emotionally, soulishly, that I'm literally going to sweat drops of blood. That's the intensity of the pressure that's going to be on him. And he said, so I'm not going to talk to you much because I'm going to be turning my focus towards the assignment that God has given me. I'm not here to do my will. I'm here to do his will. Amen. I'm, gonna I'm not going to touch much, talk much with you. For the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. So what Jesus was saying, the prince of darkness, which is Satan, is coming to put a claim on my life. But he can only claim if I have something of his in me. But he went on to say, but he doesn't have anything of his in me, so he has nothing to claim. And the King James Version says, which is why he toucheth me not. 
He cannot touch me. In other words, Jesus modeled, he demonstrated what Paul told us not to do. He said, don't mingle darkness with light. Set your boundary. Set your boundary. Amen. In Acts the 28th chapter, we see the apostle Paul. This man has done great things. He's in a storm, in a ship, on the ocean, in a storm, and they become shipwrecked, him and about a hundred and some odd sailors. Nobody dies in the shipwreck, and then they have to swim to shore, and so they, they swim to the shores of the island of Malta. It looks like this on the map, and it, when, when they do that, not, the Bible says not a soul was lost. Not a single person was lost in that shipwreck. Not a, a single sailor drowned. They all got to the island of Malta. There it was. On that day, it was rainy and cold, and the indigenous people that were there were watching every move that Paul was making and these sailors were making. And uh, suddenly, just out of nowhere, it says this, and when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when that happened, the indigenous people went, oh, he's a dead man. Because they knew he was a venomous, they knew it was a venomous viper. Oh, he's a dead man. Here's what they speculated. Oh, he's being punished by God. Oh, he must be a murderer. See? Well, when Paul kept on preaching, he didn't swell up. When he didn't swell up, he didn't start frothing at the mouth. And when, when he didn't pass out and die, he just kept preaching. They went from he must be being punished by God to he must be a God. Paul had set his boundary. He was in a storm. He was in a shipwreck. He had, to swim for, he had to swim for shore. He was bitten by a venomous snake. But even though he went through the storm, God kept him through it. God kept him through it. Amen? You may have to go through some storms. In fact, you're going to have to. But God will keep you through it if you set your boundaries. Paul didn't set his boundary based on what was happening out here. He set his boundary based on the light that he was seeing inside himself. Where do I see the light when I'm focused on the kingdom of light and the vast treasures that are within it? I'm focused on it. What have I focused on? I focused my faith on that. Amen? Well, in the kingdom of light... Set your boundary because it'll determine how far light will go. Let me put it like this. It'll determine what will happen to you and what will happen for you. In the kingdom of light, let me say it again. In the kingdom of light, set your boundary because it will determine what happens to you and what happens for you. Let me give you an example of this. I, I, uh, I've, str I've, uh, I've struggled with this passage of Scripture for years, and then one day the Holy Spirit began to teach me from it. Like a fluttering sparrow or a darting swallow, an undeserved curse will not land on its intended victim. A curse only comes on a person that deserves it. When I see a curse beginning to manifest in my life or the lives of those people I love, this is the first place I go. The second place I go is fourth chapter of Ephesians, verse 27. He says, give no place to the devil. Give no place to the devil. Someone had to let that curse in. 
someone mingled light and darkness. And that's why that curse manifests. So immediately, I go to resisting. I immediately go to resisting. When I hear about something that's dark that's, that's happened in your life, I immediately go to resisting the devil. The Bible says if you resist the devil, it, 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 he'll flee. Amen. You resist the devil not by focusing on the devil. You resist the devil by focusing on Father. Because I can't take care of him, but God can. My Father can. My Father can. Amen. Hallelujah. I begin to focus on his love. I begin to focus on the things that are in the kingdom of light. I begin to build a brighter light on the inside of my inner world. Amen. I give no place to the devil. I refuse to mingle light and darkness. Amen. Now, people in our society, no, I want to say this. People in their society, it's their society. It's not mine. It's theirs. Okay? People in their society, the reason negativity and evil happens to them and around them all the time is simply because they refuse to acknowledge God as the great light. They refuse to acknowledge Jesus as the true light. Remember that word acknowledge means to know. To know him as the great light. To know Jesus as the true light. And this evil and wickedness is perpetuated as a cycle. It repeats itself over and over and over again. Amen? In their society, there are only two groups of people. The first group of people are victims of darkness. The second group of people are villains of darkness. That's it, simply, simply put. They're either victims of darkness or they're villains of darkness. I say they are. They are. Not you, because you're sons and daughters of light. Amen. You've made him the father of lights. And from him, every good and perfect gift comes from him. So when something bad happens to people, they, they, they show their ignorance. And they say, why did God let that happen? He didn't. They mingled light and darkness. Or a curse came with a cause. That cause could simply be fear. But what's the first one we want to do? We want to, God, why did you let that happen? He didn't let nothing happen. You did. But it felt so good saying God did it. Daddy, Jimmy made me do it. Jimmy did that to me. Jimmy, Jimmy, that's why I did it. I did it because he did it. No, you didn't. You did it because you made the decision to do it. God did it. No, he didn't. The Bible says, don't you dare tempt God with evil. In other words, don't you dare put God and evil together. Don't you dare do it. But see, that's the ignorance of not just people. That's the ignorance of Christians. They just don't have anybody teaching them the un incorruptible seed of the word of God. They become one-dimensional. And typically, it's all about gathering a crowd. And the bigger the crowd, the more, uh, uh, the, the more important I am, and, and I must be doing my job right not true that's how the world of unbelievers measures success that's not how God measures success God measures success simply by will you be my son and do what I sign you to do at all cost yes sir yes sir will you say what's in my word yes sir will you follow me yes sir see set your boundary because it determines how far light goes in your life and how far darkness goes in your life. Amen? 
every single thing in the kingdom of light, you should so, become so acquainted with it. How? With your faith. You should have a faith stamp on everything in the kingdom of light. You should have, my faith is in, let's say, peace. My faith is in joy. My faith is in righteousness. Joy. joy. Let's talk about joy a minute. The Bible says that for the joy that was set before Jesus, he was able to endure the cross. See, he had to go through storms too. Well, what Jesus did was he set the joy before him, and it's what gave him the strength and the stamina to endure the pain of the cross. Why is this important? Because we know Scripture says in the book of Zechariah, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Well, what's your cross? What is it you're enduring? Set joy in front of it. Become acquainted with joy. Amen? The joy. Uh, last week, I was, I was walking down here at the end. Remember, I was doing spiritual songs. And suddenly, I started on the inside of me. I not only saw it, which is why I was doing this as I was walking down this aisle. I started hearing chimes. But these chimes were at different distances, and they were at different octaves. <laughs> Getting drunk. In the spirit. <laughs> and as I was going down through there, these chimes were words. And they were coming at me. And all of a sudden, joy began to rise up in me. And those of you who were here, laughter, I started laughing. I started laughing. And so then I started going down, and I started laying hands. And, 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 and my expectation was, well, I knew I was imparting that laughter. I was imparting that joy to other people. And as I was doing that and doing this and doing that and doing this, I stopped, the chime stopped, and I stopped and I listened. Not one person was laughing. And the Holy Spirit said to me, they haven't been taught to. Because I asked him, why? Why? Because I imparted that joy. Why? Because they haven't been taught to. They don't know to. They don't know how to receive joy. They know how to, they know how to be sober in church, be stoic in church, be proper in church. They know how to cry in church. They know how to weep in church. They just don't know how to laugh. Because it's never been demonstrated to them. It didn't stop me from laughing anyway. It didn't stop me from the joy of the Lord rising up on the inside of me anyway. I walked out of here, and I felt like I had been immersed in the glory of joy. Now, see, that's the kind of experience I want you to have, those kind of experiences. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody give the Lord praise in themselves. Faith stamp. Do that again. Bring up that faith uh, kingdom. Faith stamp every one of these. Build a list based on the prophetic promises in the Word of God. And faith stamp say, I know this. I have, I, I'm well acquainted with forgiveness. I'm well acquainted with revelation. I'm well acquainted with angels. I'm well acquainted with his mercies are new every morning. I'm well acquainted with these gifts, these, these treasures that God has given me. Amen. Now, people that are not believers, that are not sons and daughters of light, they actually set their boundary too. It's just they set their boundary in their own abilities. See, they've built their limitations in their own skill sets, in their own talents, in their own intelligence, intellect. 
They just don't build, their, they don't set their boundary on the Word of God, the kingdom of light, uh, the, the spiritual world, which is a higher dimension of existence. And they think that's logical. It's the most illogical thing there is. Because first of all, you are a spirit. Then you're a soul. Then you have a body. Your body comes last. See? It's your spirit man that's going to live forever. Amen? Now, so they set their, they set their boundaries and their own abilities. Oh, that'll take you five years to get that degree. That'll take you 10 years to pay that off. That'll take you 15 years, 20 years to build that. No, I have a father who does the impossible. I have a father who does the impossible. And we're in close relationship with one another. And I place a demand on my relationship with him because I have a right to as his son. And the truth is I would disappoint him if I didn't place a demand. I would insult him if I didn't place a demand. I would insult him if I said, if a five-year-old or your six-year-old son came to you and, and, and he said, oh, Dad, I asked this other man to buy me that tricycle. Daddy would be insulted. Why are you asking somebody, some stranger to do that for you? Why didn't you ask me? No, go to Father. Go to Father. Go to Father. Quit treating him like he's uh, something other than an individual. He is an individual. He's not a man, but he is an individual entity. Amen? And you were made in his image whether you believe it or not. So these people set their abilities. They set their I mean, they set their boundaries and their abilities. They 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 say that. Uh, hmm. Here, here's a, here's a common. Well, this is my truth. Here's a common phrase. Here, this is my truth. I just want to be me. The problem with you being me, you know, the phrase me, is you look just like everybody else in darkness. And the truth is, you didn't build your image authentically. You went to the world and copied their haircut and copied that, their style. and co There ain't nothing authentic about you. And if I'm going to copy anybody, it's going to be Jesus. Right. And I'm going to build my image through Jesus and through his word. And that's about as authentic as you can get. Amen. Give the Lord praise in this house. Set your boundary. Set your boundary. Now, see, we've come so far. Uh, that This society has come so far. See? Where, where all that now has been politicized. It doesn't belong in politics, and it doesn't belong in, in athletics, and it doesn't belong anywhere in that field. Don't stoop to their stupidity. Amen. This is a, this is a righteous or unrighteous issue, period. And I've told you, the Lord said to me coming into this year, he said, you'll see me in 2023. And you're going to see me, and your perspective of me will be unflawed. Well, in order to do that, we got to sharpen this. We got to sharpen our spirit man. Amen. We got to put things in alignment. Amen. Put it where it belongs. The truth is. God wants you and I to go deeper, deeper, deeper into the kingdom of light and further and further and further away from the kingdom of darkness. Why? I wish I could draw a line up here and you could see it. But let's say there's a line right here, and that's the kingdom 
uh, th- th- this, is, this is the kingdom of darkness. This is the kingdom of light. But I'm just inside this line. Devil can reach right over that line and touch me. The deeper I get into the kingdom of light, I'm out of touch. I said I'm out of touch. This is what Jesus was saying. The prince of the world is coming. The prince of darkness is coming. But he has nothing in me to claim. I'm so far. I'm so deep into the kingdom of light. I'm far, so far out of his reach. He can't even reach over and tap me on the shoulder with some kind of curse. He can't even reach over into, into uh, just across that line because I'm so far in the kingdom of light to give me COVID. And if you got COVID, this isn't, I'm not condemning you. I'm just saying get your faith back on the kingdom of light. Build your faith in the kingdom of light. Find yourself so deep in the kingdom of light. This is why he gave you up the path of life. We call it Path Point Fellowship Church. This is why he gave you the path of life. So you would go take that path and you would get so deep inside the kingdom of light that you become unreachable. Did you get anything out of this today? Give the Lord praise in this house. This is what happens when I take a week off. But I'm going to bring it next week, I promise you. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at this next step. Say this with me. I choose to set my boundary. I'm surrounded by light, and the dark forces cannot touch me. Say it again. I choose to set my boundary. I'm surrounded by light, and the dark forces cannot touch me. Give the Lord praise in this house. Hallelujah. 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 Go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes. Now turn your eyes over on the Father. The Lord would say to those here this morning that are fence walkers, you walk the fence. It's a tight line that you're walking on. And you're walking that dividing line and you're within the reach of darkness. You can't, the Holy Spirit would say to you, you can't do this in your own natural strength. You can't do it. You're going to have to do it out of a believing heart. Believing in who? The Father of light. You're going to do it by faith. You're going you're gonna to have to ask me, saith the Lord. I'm not going to ask you. Some of you are waiting on me to ask you. No, you need to ask me. You say, what should I ask you? Ask me to help you to be faithful in our relationship. I can't tell you how many times this is not, look, look up here for just a second. I can't tell many times this is, this is, not, this is not some gross sin or anything. I can't tell many times I've broken my relationship with Missy. Again, this is don't don't let your imaginations run away with you. But immediately I said, this isn't about Missy, this is about my father. I broke being faithful with my father. See? Anytime there's a broken relationship. It's simply because someone wasn't faithful with the Father. Amen? You're faithful with the Father. You'll be faithful to people. Amen? Now, that doesn't mean you're going to cozy up and be lovey-dovey to every person. No. No, there's a, there's a space for every person and a person for every space. We talked about that in a series I did called Relationship Matrix many years ago. But it's important that you recognize 
that God wants you to be faithful without asking, having to ask you to be. Be faithful. Be faithful. Be faithful in what? Be faithful to His Word. What He says in His Word. What it is you know He said, be faithful with it. Amen? Don't mix. Don't blend. I believe some things. I don't know if I believe that or not. I don't believe that. Don't mix it. Just say, you said it. I believe it. That settles it. Say it with me. You said it. I believe it. That settles it. Say it again. You said it. I believe it. That settles it. Man, when you do that, all of a sudden, the Lord gets very talkative. He gets very communicative with you. You'll have to ask him to slow down. Don't talk so fast. You'll have to ask him, don't talk to me. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. Please, not right now. And he's gracious in his relationship. He'll, talk, he'll stop talking. He'll say, let's, let's, let's pick that up tomorrow. Okay. See, he, he, he forgets that you're flesh. You know, the Bible says that Enoch walked with God for over 300 years, and then Enoch was, and then Enoch was not because God took him to heaven with him. Why? Because they spent so much time talking together, he couldn't do without him. Enoch will be one of the great prophets in the end times that will come back to the earth. When you get to the other side, you'll remember what I said. When some of these things play out, you'll remember what was said. You'll remember. You'll remember. Don't fall for the myths, the wives' table, the wives' fa- wives' fables. Who said God's just going to be okay with that, and He's just going to let everybody in heaven? No, He's not. No, He's not. Now I regret to say that, and I hate that for the people that have gone on. But the Bible says He gives us today as a space of time to repent. And that is his mercy. His mercies are new every morning. I, the first thing I said out of my mouth this morning, but Missy had, just, had been out of bed for a minute, and I said to the Lord, thank you for the gift of this day. Thank you for time to repent, to get my relationship with you just as sharp as I can. I want to be a friend of God. I want to be a friend of God. I don't want to just sing that song. I actually want to be a friend of God. Amen. Faithful. Faithful. Faithful to obey. The Bible tells us that King Saul was told by the prophet, when you go and fight Agag and his Agagites, You kill their cattle, you kill their sheep, you kill every person, you kill that king, and you kill his wife, and you kill his daughters and sons. And Saul came back from war, and sure enough, he had his little prizes with him, the king. And what God tell him? Obedience is better than sacrifice. He said, Lord, well, I brought all these cattle back so we can sacrifice them to you. He said, obedience is better than sacrifice. Just obey. Just obey. Have a willing heart. Just simply do what I say. Amen? Well, guess what? Agag lived on, and his descendants showed up in Esther's life. And now Esther is dealing with his descendants who are trying to kill her. And that never would have been a storm she had to go through if King Saul would have just done what God told him to do. God sees 100, 500, 1,000 years into the future. 
Amen. Just simply do what God says. Amen. Hallelujah.